So let's talk a little bit about triple integrals and the idea behind them, and then we're just going to be focusing on evaluating triple integrals in this section. So purely evaluation. So here's here's the idea. I'm going to attempt to draw this uh, beautiful picture. So we have the z-axis. That's the z-axis. So that's z, right? We use three dimensions in calculus three, and this is the x-axis. That's the hey, Mama do, and this is the y-axis. The y-axis. And so what we do is we look at a particular region. I'm sticking to my notes here. So we have, I'm gonna draw like a, like a box. So here, are, here we have a region. It's not just a box, but it's a 3D box, right? So I guess that's just called, what do you call a 3D box? Just a, a cube or a rectangular box? Yeah, prism, I don't know, that's my box. Okay, so do you, does that look like a box? Uh, it, uh, it's too, I don't wanna erase it. So here's how you do it. Here's how you, if you wanted to redo it, you could do it like this. Right. So that you draw a square, you draw a square, you draw the lines. I learned that in Calc One when I was teaching it. Okay, um, so we have a box. Okay, so this box, this is this is called Q. It's our region Q. Hey, it's our region Q. And so what we want to do is we look at uh, a, a little section inside this region Q. So we're looking at a little a little cube. Okay, so we look at a little cube inside this inside this three-dimensional region. So this is, I'm gonna call this the ith box. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get the volume of Q. We're gonna, we're, we'll, we'll, that'll be one thing we do, right? So instead of looking at rectangles now, right, we're looking at little three-dimensional boxes, right? Because we're leading into triple integrals. So you have a region Q, and you're looking at a little box inside this region. So it's a, it's a, it's a three-dimensional box, okay? Uh, I'm calling it a box because it doesn't really have to be a cube, right? A cube would mean that all sides are the same length, right? So, so you call it a box, okay? So if we look at the volume of the ith box, we'll call that delta uh, v sub i. Delta V sub I. And I guess uh, if you have a box, the volume of a box is length times width times um, height, right? So X times Y times Z. So I'm gonna use this notation here. So I'll use delta X sub I, delta Y sub I. It's pretty, pretty hard to understand this stuff. Delta Z sub I. Okay, so that'll be the volume of the ith box, right? So we have this region Q. Mm -hmm. Of just the little one? Of just the little one. Of just the little one. So this is the volume of the ith box. Yeah, good. Ask. Ask. Good question. So yeah, soon. Yeah, soon. So we, we have a little we have a little box and the volume of the ith box is equal to that. And so now what we do is we take the Riemann sum. So the Riemann sum. The Riemann sum is just a sum. Is just a sum. Is this sum here? So we're going from i equals one, I guess, to n, and we have uh, the actual function. So f at x sub i, y sub i, z sub i, right? So that's like the w value. It's not the z value, right? This is w equal a function of x, y, z. So it's a little bit different, right? Um, so we haven't been doing stuff like this. And then here we have uh, delta v sub i. So you take this function value times the volume of the box. This is called the Riemann sum. So this is an approximation uh, to something, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then so you take the limit, take the limit. So when you take the limit, um, you actually get what's called the triple integral. So you get uh, this triple integral here. And this is used in physics of f of x, y, z. Okay, And then you put the q here. Last time we had the r. And last time we had dA here, because we had double integrals, what do you think is going to go here? This dV, dV. So in this section, we're just going to be uh, evaluating this, right? This is called the triple, triple integral. We're just going to focus on, on the evaluation process. On your exam, all you'll have to do is focus on the, on the evaluation. No, no, no. I figured we did, we, we spent... A uh, considerable amount of time last time switching. This is really hard to switch limits. It takes a lot of work. You have to draw 3D pictures. I mean, we could do it, but um, it's Christmas, so um, let's not. So, so let's just, just focus on the evaluation, right? So, plus, we have another section after this. We're going into chapter 15. So, so in this section, we're going to be focusing on the triple integral. Now, now, if you look just at this integral here, okay. So now there is no f, right? It's just, f is just one. So now, if you look at the Riemann sum. The Riemann sum is actually an approximation of the volume. 
right? So this is actually going to be the volume. So this is going to be the volume, volume of Q. Just random info, extra life info. Yeah. This is like the scariest looking one in the homework. I figured we should do, <laughs> we should do this one. I haven't done this in like six months, so I don't know uh, how hard it will be. We can do a couple of these until you feel you got it. Um, if you do all five in the homework, you'll be more than ready for the test, right? You'll, you'll, you'll be a monster. Um, not literally, but you know. Okay, so, so we have to integrate this, right? So dy, dz, dx. So all we have to do is integrate three times, right? So first, oh, I'll see if you remember. What do we integrate with respect to first in this case? Why? Because why? Because you see what? The, the dy. Yeah, so first we integrate with respect to y. So L and z is a constant when you're integrating with respect to y because you have a dy here. So what you do, so I'm going to write solution. No, no, you're integrating, right? Not differentiating. Yeah, oh, yeah, you got this. So this is from 1 to 2. Good. From 1 to e squared. And now we're integrating this, so it's just going to be y. I'm going to write it like this. L and z, this is really bad, times y. And we're going, I'm going to put a, a double bracket here. We're going from, from y equals 0, right, from y equals 0 to y equals 1 over xz. And then now we just have the dz, and, and, then we have, and then we have the dx. I'm going slow. Why? Because I have to think about it. I have to think about it too, right? Like, I have to actually do it. Um, and it's just a lot of notation. You don't do this every day, right? Not yet. So y is 0. See, see how I put the y there? Everyone see that? That helps. That helps you know which one to plug in. Are you taking the test tomorrow, or was it, was it, was it you? Yeah, I said Oh, okay. Okay, oh, okay. It's a good time. Gabriel's not, I think Gabriel already took it. I wonder how he did. Okay, all right. Any questions so far on this? Okay, so now we have to plug this in, right, for the y, and then subtract and plug in the zero. So let's do it. Oh, okay, so this is going to be <laughs> one to two, one to e squared. So plug this in, so it's gonna be, um, I'm gonna write it like this, one over xz, ln z. And then when you subtract and plug in zero, it goes away, so you don't need to do it, right? So then we just have, um, DZ, 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 DX. DX. Good. DZ, DX. DZ, DX. Good stuff. It's not so bad. For some reason, it looked harder. So far, uh, okay. Yeah, it's going to get a little bit nasty now. Any questions up to here on, on the steps on, on this one? So, fun times. So we've got, we've got. Negative 1 over X squared Z. No, we're integrating with respect to what now? Oh, snap. That's right. The snap, that's right. With respect to, I used to have a friend named Snap. Uh, with respect to Z, with respect to Z, so we have ln Z over Z, and the 1 over X is like a constant. So we have to make a U substitution now, right? Yeah. So let's do it. So we're going to let U equal ln Z. Hardcore. Right, you think of the 1 over X as being like a constant, right? The 1 over X is like a constant. So du is going to be 1 over z dz. What was that? 1 over z dz. Oh, it's okay. Oh, sorry, I thought it was that. Like, ah! It's breaking. It's going to blow up. It's okay. I'm glad it's your phone. So 1 over z dz. The 1 over x, it, we can let it hang out, right? Everyone okay with that? I'm just going to leave it there. It's just going to stay there like an annoying thing. Um, we do have to change the limits, though, right? So when, so when z is 1, U is going to be, so ln 1. So what's ln 1? Do you all remember? Can you, uh, zero. Zero. Could you not also just put everything in and then um, you substitute it back in? Yeah. Yes, you could be slow, and I'll mark it right. So you could do it wrong, and I'll mark it right. So you can like not make the substitution, plug everything back, go back to Z, and then, and then yeah. I won't do it. Yeah, I'll let you do that. I won't do it because I'm trying to be better, but mm -hmm. I used to do that for years, for years. And then one time I got stuck on a problem for like a week and then I gave up. Okay, so then, and then when z is e squared, <laughs> u is going to be ln e squared, so uh, 2, right? So 2, right? Because this cancels, right? ln e cancels, so you get 2. So u is 2. So much what is? Oh, I know. It's so much easier. I know. It's rigged. It's, it's a math class. So let's see. So, so let's rewrite this. So this is equal to the integral from 1 to 2, okay? 
And then instead of one, uh, it's going to be zero. zero. Yes. And then two up here. Good, 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 good. Because when that's that, that's when you get two. The one over x hangs out. I'm going to leave it there. And then the u is the ln z, and the du is the 1 over z dz. So it's going to be u du. And we're missing one more thing. What's left here? Do you all know? DX. Yes. DX. Very good. Very good. I have to think probably just as hard as you do, because I don't do this. This doesn't come up in other classes, at least that I teach, right? So you don't do this in differential equations. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Any questions? Any questions? And then in this case, if you're using this, you're just going to be you squared. squared over 2. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and this is the hardest one, I think. This is the hardest one in the homework, right? The, there's not going to be any trig subs or anything funky. All the integrals in this class are easier than the ones in Calc 2. So we still have from 1 to 2, from 1 to 2. Hey, Veronica, right? Is it? Uh, so from 1 to 2. Um, what Isaac said. So uh, 1 over x, u squared over 2. Right, and we're going from 0 to 2, and then we have the dx, and then we have the dx. You didn't miss much. We're just doing a triple, we're just integrating three times. Just a triple integral. Yeah, just, psh, yeah. We're doing quintuple integrals later. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So, quintuple means 5, by the way, so in case anyone, yeah. <laughs> Which one do we plug in first, the 2 or the 0? The 2. And you plug in for the, oh, I'm being sloppy here. I didn't put the U there. I was getting overconfident because you were saying it was easy. Yeah, so I mean, you, you, just so U is 0, U is 2. Optional, right? Optional. You don't have to put that there, uh, but you can, right, to make it easier for yourself. This is 1 to 2, uh, 1 over x. So plugging in the 2, that's going to give us 2 squared, which is 4, okay? So 4 over 2 is 2, right? Right, plugging in 2, you get 2 squared over 2, so you get 4 over 2, you get 2. Subtract, plug in 0, it goes away, so you don't need it. So then we just have dx. Dx. So again, plugging in 2, you get 2 squared over 2, which is 4 over 2, which is 2. And then subtract and plug in 0, so it goes away. So now we're here. Now we're here. Now we're here. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now we just got to integrate 2 over x. We haven't done much integration in this class. Anyone know what 1 over x gives you? Do you all remember? That? No? That's the derivative. Natural log. Yeah, so it's 2 ln absolute value x. Mm -hmm. Yep. Blast from the past, right? Blast from the past. Maybe not a blast, but it's from the past. So whenever you have 1 over x, it becomes that, right? It becomes that. It's been a long time, maybe. We've been mostly focused on derivatives. Not quite. Yeah, I'll on a four if you skip some steps and do some math in your head. Yeah, sure. Some pros do. Uh, so you get 2 ln 2 minus 2 ln 1, uh, which is just 2 ln 2 because this piece here is equal to 0. Kenny was saying it's ln 4 because you can take the 2 and bring it up, and it becomes uh, ln 4, right? Because it's ln 2 squared. Someone should type it in and see if it's correct. I'd be really excited if it's wrong. Be disappointed if it's wrong. You got it wrong? Oh, oh. Oh, you got it wrong, but it's not wrong. Oh. Okay. What'd you do wrong? Uh, uh, what, what'd you do, Kenny? I'm sorry, not Kenny. Uh, she's not Kenny. You're Kenny. Where did the which, which LN? This one? Because it's 1 over x. Mm -hmm. Oh, I brought the x. And did like some other, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Not so bad, right? Not so bad. Let me pause here. Yeah. I figured out what the application of this is. Okay, what, what is it? What is it? Uh, the application is for when you are looking for the mass of an item that has a variable density. Thank you. And f is the density function, right? Mm -hmm. Boom! Yes, that's what I thought. That's what I wanted to say it, but I didn't want to because I wasn't sure. But yeah, yeah. so f is the density, yeah. and the triple integral is the... You get, get the mass. You get the mass. Yeah. So it's a physics thing. So it's used in physics. Everyone okay with the math here? Everyone see how I got ln4? Because it's ln 2 to the 2. If you wanted to do that, you can just stop here. That's fine as well, right? Uh, Kenny said ln4. Why'd you say ln4, Kenny? You're just, you're just new. Like, it's <laughs> great. Hey, what's up? You made it. You didn't miss much. We just did a triple integral. So, so we're gonna do another. We'll do another one. We'll do another one. We'll do another triple integral now. Yeah, we should. We should do. Oh, I don't want to do it. So we should do it. We do number five. Let's do number five. Any any questions on this one though? Everyone okay with this one? Nice. You got it. All right, let's do it. Number five. Number five. Nice. The first three are kind of easy, so I think we should do like the last ones. So five. So so we have to integrate 
integrate, integrate, three times. So we're going from 0 to 1 over y, which was a little bit taller. Uh, zero thanks, thanks, Jeff. And then 0 to the power of the region prime y, dz, dx, dy. dz, dx, dy. Do you all want to try this one on your own first, maybe? Just No. No? Know what? I'm yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, some people are saying yes. Try it. No, someone said yes, so all it takes is one person. So try it. Try to see if you can do it. Take five minutes. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm not ready yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, I believe you can do it. Just, just do it three times. Just integrate. <laughs> try it, try it. I'll be honest with you, I forgot what time class started. <laughs> oh, really? I got out like way early for physics, and I had stories on those were sick. Yeah, they were out early too from physics for some reason. I'll delete this part. Yeah. Yeah. Try to do it. So first, first you integrate with respect to z, then with respect to x, then with respect to y. I can't believe it's still working. Like, one percent. It's a higher power. It wants. Higher power. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's charging. I don't know. Surprised. You trying it? You should try it. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Don't be weak. Oh. <laughs> If you can do it now, then you're ready for the test, right? That's pretty good. Yeah, it's true. Whatever, dude. That's pretty good, actually. You could try it, Veronica. You can do it. You can try it, right, Veronica? So first, you, this is a constant. Huh? Yeah, just integrate with respect to z. So you get z sine y, and then you go from here to here. And then do x, and then do y. Yeah, just keep going. Just take your time. Take five minutes. It's good. It's good. Then I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. You integrate with respect to z, right? So the sine y is a constant, right? So this is going to be 0 to pi over 2, 0 to y over 2, and then sine y is a constant. So it's like a number. So you just, you just multiply by z, right? Yeah, yeah, let's do it like that. Good, smart, intelligence, z sine y. And then we're going from z equals 0 to z equals 1 over y. This is optional, this notation. I include it just for clarity, just to help myself, right? And then we have... No, no, it's not, no, 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 something else. That's like. He's just, he's just making sure you remember which variable. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to mess up. I, all right, extra credit. Did I make any mistakes last time? Yeah, I think I have one. one. Never. Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. four points right Yeah, sure, but I won't mess up anymore. Five points. Okay, this is zero. Christmas, five points. I got, I got one, and then somebody else over there might have got one. Okay, I'll, I'll check later. Uh, uh, okay, plug this in for the Z so we get uh, one over Y sine Y. That sounds really scary, like, oh my god, how am I going to integrate that? Subtract and plug in 0 so it goes away, and then we have dx dy. Well, the good news is we're integrating with respect to x, not with respect to y. Right? I know. Right? See? So there's that fear, and then it just goes away when you see the dx. <laughs> if there was a dy here, then you're out of luck, right? you got to, like, switch the limits or something. Hey! What's going on? All right, so this is equal to... Let's do it. This is equal to... So we have to integrate again uh, with respect to x. That means we just multiply by x, right? So it's be x over y sine y, I believe. I believe. So 0 to pi over 2. Then we have x over y sine y. And we're going from x equals 0. Yep. Can you um, also, for your, when you're doing it for y with respect to y, like you did right there, this equals a lot. You didn't do it for that guy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want to mess up. Uh, dy. What's that? Say that again. You know how you're identifying what equals what? I did it here and here. You didn't do it for the y. Where? How you do it on the side? Here. I'm doing it now. I'm here now. Okay, I got really scared. I got confused. Okay, this is 0 to pi over 2. Whoo! Heart attack. Okay, so x equals y over 2. <gasps> what happens to the y's? They cancel! Oh my god, this is going to be 1 half sine y. Is that right? X in the end, right? Oh, never mind. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Minus zero, so it goes away. What's left now? We just what? Dy. Dy. Thank you. Making me sweat over here. <sighs> okay. So now we have to integrate sine. What's a function who, uh, whose derivative is sine? Negative cosine. Negative cosine. Very good. 
Patrick. Very good, Patrick. This is going to be negative one half cosine y, and we're going from zero to pi over two. I thought I had messed up like really bad when you were saying that, Isaac. It's all right. It's really confusing. You just got to go slow. Plug in the pi over two. So you get cosine pi over two minus cosine zero. Cosine of pi over two is zero, right? So you just end up with negative one half, zero minus one, which is one half. Who got it right? Just curious. Almost everyone. Good work. Good. Good. Oh, no, it's okay. Sorry, don't feel bad. It's okay. I'm just messing with you. That's fine. That's good.